Hello everybody, welcome back to Green Line 40. It's our second video for the Green Line 40 handover. Uh, we want to go through the hybrid system, the drive system. Um, and it's very simple and we're going to show you how it operates. We're going to put the ignition on, on the Volvo display. We have our selector switch on electric and when you turn on the ignition automatically your motor gauges we got one for each side one for port and one for starboard light up green now what happens quite often you have a breaker in the panel for your hybrid system what says clutch actuator if that is turned off when you turn on your ignition you have a red light here and it gives you an E00991 code. That means you forgot to turn on the breaker. This breaker is very important because that operates your clutch actuator and your cooling pump for your cooling system from the electric motors. So breaker is on it shows you motor and you are ready to go on electric and you operate the electric motors just of your Volvo shifter box you go in gear and here we are we are moving taking the green line off the dock is so easy because we have a bow in the stern thruster we push the boat over and it will move us completely away from the dock So now maneuvering in electric, I mean, you can hear that we hear nothing. <laughs> Put it in gear. And that's one thing you really have to get used to in the beginning. You have your neutral locator on your shifter boxes for both motors. In the beginning, it's very important to see if you're in gear or not, because you really cannot feel the difference. Very important to keep an eye on your neutral so you're not walking away from the helm when you are still in gear like right now we are still in gear we are moving but you cannot hear or feel anything except if you see outside we are moving forward so that is the beauty of the hybrid cruising in complete silence so the next thing we're going to plan to do we're going to go to a dock we're going to dock the boat in electric with a bow and stern truster and then we're going to plug in shore power to explain how the whole shore power system all right here we are coming to a very tight slip we have a beautiful side door what gives you all the capability and we have a power in the stern thruster so that lets us slide into the tightest slip wherever you need to go it's maneuvering on electric very smooth very easy you can pull in there and then you have your bow and turn thruster and just basically step the boat right in there. As easy as that. Okay, we are right on the pilings. We can tie it up. So we just tied up to the dock. We plugged in our shore power we turned on the main breaker on the pedestal make sure you take the breaker off on the pedestal when you plug in or unplug then we double check that the main breaker on the inside of the boat is on and if all that is checked we're going to go back to our inverter panel and right now it says main on and blinking inverter that means we have shore power this 25 that's your dial where i can dial down to 19 20 all the way up to 50 amp so what that does is if you have a 30 amp plug you put a pigtail on your 50 and you only have a 30 you can dial down and the boat will not blow the breaker and you can operate your boat off a 30 you can even go down to a 110 20 still operate your full boat and never draw more out of their shore power as the shore power can support. That's very important if you only have 
20 or 30 available or an old 50, what an old 50 breaker usually blows at about 45, 48. You can dial it down and keep your breaker employed and still operate your whole boat because if you would need more than the amperage what the dock can supply, your inverter, inverter system will supplement to it and you don't have to do anything to your boat and can run all the systems. That is very unique to Green Line where you use your solar, your battery and all this combined to can op you can operate the boat. So right now if you look at your display we dialed it down to 25. That means we only get 3 kilowatt out of shore power but with all the AC units running the boat uses 3.6 kilowatt so that means we supplement the difference out of our inverter system from the LiPo battery and the solar charger recharges the battery and we do not have to manage switching on and off different components. Of course if you're in that mode you got to manage. I mean if you're going to run everything all the time and you would have a day with no sun whatever you could eventually run down your battery. That's where you have to monitor your system. So now we just dialed up our inverter to 38 amps. Now you see we're coming in with 44.1 kilowatt. The boat only uses 3.6 kilowatt. So the not used energy from the boat gets transferred right back in the battery and recharges your LiPo battery. So you see we dialed up to 38. We showed you the Victron display where you, we have more power coming in than the boat is using. So the power what the boat doesn't use gets charged back in the battery. That's why it shows you bulk. That means you have more power than you need and it gets right charged into the battery. So when you are plugged into shore power and you switch over to charger only. Charger only means now your inverter is not supporting the boat anymore because the inverter is turned off. Now your boat is only getting supply from the shore power. What means if you would lose shore power your air condition dies down and if the shore power comes back your air condition comes back on. Why would you use this position? If you live in South Florida or in any tropical or subtropical areas when you leave the boat unattended and it's on inverter and you would lose shore power your AC could eventually draw down the battery. That is just a safety feature to protect your battery when you're not on board and you're not managing or monitoring the battery that you're not drawing down your battery. But when you switch back over it's going to go seamless from charger only to inverter. When you unconnect or when you disconnect your shore power before switching over, the whole system will power down and when you switch over it will power up again. So switch it over before then you don't have this power down scenario. One important thing about the breaker board. We have three switches recording water. You have your fresh water pump, you got your toilet, and you have your grey water, what it says here. The grey water actually is a shower sump pump. What is very important, if you take a shower it has to be on, otherwise it will not pump the water overboard. But very important when you run the boat, when you run the air condition, the shower sump pump always needs to be on because the condensation from the air condition is going into the shower sump. If you run your air condition without the grey water pump, it will eventually overflow in the bilge. To keep your bilge dry, keep the shower sump pump on anytime you run the air condition. Now we are ready to leave the dock to cut the shore power. So make sure you are on inverter on and not on charger only. So your boat seamlessly switches over to inverter from shore power. Let's cut the power. So now we have Chris cutting the shore power. You see we still have 4 kilowatts coming in. The boat's using 3.5 kilowatts. And here we go. He cut the power. The inverter takes over seamlessly. We don't lose any air condition. We don't lose any power. No TV. Nothing powers down.
All right, we are off the dock again, and let's do a quick switch between electric and diesel. We are running on electric right now. The way to switch over, we're going to bring the boat to neutral. We're going to switch from electric to diesel. Then we wait till the gauge goes from motor to idle to generator. As soon as it's on generator, we can start the diesel. The diesels are running and we go in gear and here we are off in diesel. So now we're running on diesel. We are in a canal. We actually would like to go on electric. We're going to go back on neutral. We're going to turn the diesels off. We switch to electric. We're going to wait till it shows us motor again. It goes from generator to motor. Now we are in motor mode and we're going forward. And that's how easy and quick you switch between diesel and electric. And here we are off again on electric. What makes it such a nice cruise with absolutely no noise, no vibration. So the hybrid gauge shows you your temperature of the electric motor, your RPM and the amperage you're going to draw. So now I'm going to throttle up. You see the RPMs going, you see the RPMs going up and you see how the amps are going up with the RPMs. We are not drawing anything except of the 1.2, what is the minimum you need to have your system activated. To sum up this video for today about the hybrid system, about the inverter system. So you can see, it doesn't matter which situation you're in, you always can recharge your battery, either if you go through shore power, if you go through solar, or just flick on your diesels and use the E-units to recharge. And the beauty is when you're running the boat on diesel, you're always recharging your battery. So from a 25% to a 75% battery, you can recharge this with the diesels within 20, 25 minutes. So if you manage your battery good, you never run out of juice. So have a good day. See you in the next video.